Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 23 hours and uh, 13 minutes into the 29th day of October. Happy birthday, me. Yeah, yeah. I hit the, the 56 mark. I'm sufficiently over the hill now, <laughs> over the 50 mark. Uh, I just finished listening to Lionel about a half hour ago. Uh, took a little bit of time to sort of mull things over and think about things. So listen to, uh, this is before, uh, listened to and got up. In terms of the editing, uh, the uh, the uh, observation vlog from uh, yesterday, uh, from the twenty eighth, that went up. Uh, no particular problem. No, not yesterday. I think it was. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it was one of the days. It's it, it, it's hard to keep track of the days. It's hard to keep track of when I reported them. Uh, sometimes I do take a break. It's just because I haven't formulated the essay in my mind. I wasn't able to formulate the essay. There were certain questions that I still had to sort of check up on and uh, look into before I uh, came back with the essay. The essay, these essays are rough draft. They're not uh, anything polished, so expect errors and flubs in them. And I still have to work on my pronunciation, but depending on how tired I am, it's, it's, a, it's a fatigue issue. And right now, a large chunk of the time, my eyes are going to be closed because I am uh, in that state of fatigue. Uh, where I have a hard time keeping my eyes open. So that's going to be part of the reality here. But, of course, uh, if I ever decide to do a documentary, do something more polished, uh, this is where the documentary will be pulled from. It will be pulled from the essays uh, you know, and also some of my notes. So ooh, the notes, the, the essays that I'm doing now are pulled from the notes and the documentaries, which were more polished or the second or third draft of uh, the essay, uh, will come out of this. And I began to realize as I was sort of listening to uh, uh, my last uh, observation vlog that sometimes you need to spend more time on something, topic, particularly when the topic is complex. You need to spend more time on it. That's because people can't absorb all that information all at once. They have to come back to it again and again and again. And this is why sometimes you go back and you read something once, you read something twice, you read something three times, and you'll find that every time you go back and read something, well, why are you reading that again? Well, because every time you go back and read something, you'll find something that you, you missed before. And so it it furthers your understanding as your experience grows with that particular book or the particular character. Uh, your understanding grows as well. And this is sort of the same thing here. Is that the, the understanding doesn't grow or come immediately. It has to be a repeat, a repeated uh, event. Uh, an event that repeats itself on a regular basis in order for the uh, understanding to evolve uh, to whatever direction it's going to go into and what, whatever direction it's going to go into and whatever level that you will be completing it at. Because again, you're not going to get everything. You're going to get an understanding. And remember that the understanding itself, the full, we'll call the absolute knowledge, is always asymptotic. You'll never have or achieve the absolute knowledge. You're going to approach it in, 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 a, in some form or manner, you're going to approximate it. You'll never be there. Uh, that being said, is that Lionel, again, talking about the, the situation that's going on. And it's hard to bring up everything that needs to be said because there are things that need to be kept back. If you know something, it's not about publicizing something, oh, look, this person over there has a X, Y, and Z. You know, the, the, they're going to stop what's going on with the shadow government. Well, of course, what's going to happen? The shadow government's going to go over there and knock that guy out. Why? Because you told him that he has something. Oh, got to see what he's got to see what he has. So there are sources that need to be protected, and other options that the shadow government doesn't know about. And I said the shadow government is again pretty identifiable. The one that's, if you do the historical background, if you do go in to find out who is who, you begin to realize that the Pope is at the top of the, the top of the chain. You go into the uh, whole concept of the work. Lionel often talks about the work. That is a LARP, live action role play. This is what you see at Davos. Davos is a live action role play. These are all nerds. They're, 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 these are the same people who play, who would have played Dungeons and Dragons. It's just 
at another level. And so what happens, all these different things that you have in Dun Dungeons, and Dra Dungeons and Dragons, all these nerdy type of stuff, the amulets, the, 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 the symbology, all these different things are going to be there. But they have a deeper meaning. They have a deeper significance. You can't simply take things at a surface value. But the thing is, if you're only working off of one perspective, one point of view, that's all you're going to have. And this is, unfortunately, the conspiracy theorists, not only do you have to go deeper in, do a deeper dive, you have to get other perspectives. You have to see what other people are thinking about, including those who are on opposition. guy with a very loud pickup truck. <laughs> there are guys out there, the biggest people, and this is it, who need to be heard, need to be seen. They're all over the place. <laughs> so they come in, you know, this is a good example of, of why things aren't necessary in terms of the control, the way they, the, the way they sort of pretend to be. Not everything, the work, as I said before, and this is, I, I went in to sort of clarify this more committed as, as an example of what the work could be, is that there's often, in many cases, improv. There are people who will take the initiative and take their own understanding to it and act in a manner that was not prescribed or predicted. And the thing is, a, a control agent, the person, the director of the work, so the control agent is the director of the work, again, doesn't have all the information. They're given simply what they need to know to put on the, on the work, to complete the work. And they'll, they won't necessarily, because they, again, this has to do with their understanding. If they're around well and long enough and have enough of a grasp of the environment that they are creating the work in, the LARP in, then they can allow these rogue players to come in and do their, their thing. And the thing is, because you didn't predict what they do, would do or could predict what they do, you simply allow it to occur and you work your system around it. You now have plausible tonight. Well, I wasn't part of this. This was we didn't plan to do this, but hey, it was helpful to us. You know, it did work out in the, in the long run. It worked out in our favor. So, you know, and from their perspective, if if the end is just the by the means, then there is nothing wrong with using rogue agents, uh, even though you don't have control over them, to achieve an objective that you ultimately want. And remember, so the, the bankers in this situation, the bankers for the Vatican, they're hedge funds. What do hedge funds do? They make money off of volatility. The more volatile, the more chaos there is, the more money they make. Who is George Soros? George Soros. Same thing with Warren Buffett. Same thing with in, in, in these larger bankers. They're all hedge funds. They make money on conflict. They make money on chaos. They make money on volatility and uncertainty. This is where they're making money. But the problem is, is that this money, this this aspect is limited because not everybody is on the same page in terms of the understanding of what we call the Gnostic goal of playing the hedge. So the hedge work, which you, is what you see at Davos, Davos is fundamentally the, the, the face of the hedge fund. This is where their stage is. That's where their LARP is. That's where their work is. And you have a number of players around there doing their bit, bit and piece. And they have they have the cameras there. They have the sort of the, the, the uh, uh, William F. Buckley type of uh, round table where uh, no table, but they're just sort of sitting in chairs having a chit chat about uh, how things should go in the future. Oh, how do they get these ideas? Well, they have advisors. The advisors, again, will put together a LARP and they'll role play and they'll put together scenarios and well, this will go this way, and this will go that way, and don't worry, there's not going to be any problems. But there always are. And the thing is, this this is it has existed for a long time. Right now, we're seeing it on TV, on live stream, because that's what's available. But these events... Went on before, before, te before television, like I said, before live streaming, you had television, uh, and then you the same battle between uh, 
YouTube and what, what, what's going on now in terms of live streaming with the majors. You had, uh, in, in the cable universe, you had on TV, you had first uh, the antenna. The antenna you have on VHF, you had all your majors, the major networks were, were, were on VHF. You switch over to UHF when UHF came in. This was these were smaller transmitters, but could handle a large uh, handle a longer range of customer. But the equipment wasn't as expensive, so you could have smaller channels. And this is what you had uh, channels popping up all over the dial. How did the networks get around it? Well, this is why you had the network affiliate. These smaller channels on UHF became affiliates of various different networks, larger networks. And they produce shows like Star Trek, Batman, uh, a large chunk of the shows that became something known as cult classics all came off of this this UHF uh, sort of existence. Uh, but the thing is, they, these were eventually this was eventually snuffed out. The major companies wanted more control over things, so they created cable, and they did the same thing. They offered these these people who were on UHF, they offered them a cable spot, and they were able eventually to take over the entire market. This is what you. This is what you saw in the '90s. The move to digital to, di to the digital receiver. You saw this in 2000 with the two with the, with the 2K bug, where you had to replace all your VCRs and TVs because of the 2K bug. They've always created these works to convince people in the public to buy and sort of purchase new technology to solve a problem that really wasn't there, uh, but it allowed them to knock off their smaller competition. I think we got a train coming in. The uh, right wave guide is actually starting to activate. It's still in the background, but it's, I, I can hear the rumbling. Uh, typically, they come through. I would say just about midnight is when they sort of uh, run run through. Uh, they try to avoid the traffic before then. Uh, anyways, before you had. Before you had the the, 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 the the iteration of VHF, that's your major affiliates, uh, UHF, and then in cable when the affiliates where the majors, major networks again took over again. This is Comcast, Time Warner, uh, eventually uh, Bell, uh, Verizon, your phone companies got involved in this game uh, and all battled up for dominance and control. Uh, before then, you had radio. As a matter of fact, most of your television networks that were VHF were all, uh, ABC, CBS, uh, NBC. These were all radio radio programs. And you can go back and listen before you had TV. You can go back and listen to radio dramas. And they'll have the same. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you can go back and listen to H.G. Wells' uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, this is in the 1930s, 1935. There was no TV around. There was radio then. And what were they, what were they talking about? The War of the Worlds. This was when uh, aliens from Mars were going to take over the planet. And this radio actor, Orson Welles, uh, was considered to be a genius of his time, did, did the radio play in such a manner that he it was at, it, it was done as a real radio broadcast, as a real crisis. They acted the uh, the part of a crisis. This is where the whole, you talk, ever heard of the term, crisis actor. This is where it came from. This is these were your first crisis actors, it, but the the crisis wasn't real. It was a drama. It was a work. That's what rule the world with uh, you know uh, Orson Welles. That's what it was. It was a radio drama, but people thought it was real. They couldn't tell that it wasn't simply a drama. It's getting louder. So these were, we're going back to 1935, 1930. We're going back that far in terms of works, in terms of so called Mockingbird Media. Mockingbird Media didn't emerge in terms of the declassification until uh, 19, 1960s or later. Because they, 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 they were doing it all along, they, they kept doing it. The news is the work. It is the drama. It is the live action role play. And you go back into a, a book, and, and they even have the BBC document 
D- BBC production of it uh, with uh, uh, Nigel Horthorn. And he is, you follow, in terms of an actor, you follow his career, Nigel Horthorn, and you'll begin to see some of the more amazing, spectacular parts of history sort of come alive uh, through him. And there was one called Barchester Chronicles. And in there, uh, same thing. You have these reformers going against the major establishment. They have the end establishment against the establishment. And they would produce their own papers. There was one called the Jupiter. And they would make insinuations. They, they would write false articles about so and so of the people who were in society, particularly some priests and this and that. They would make assumptions that weren't necessarily true. But as long as, as, long as they, they used the proper phrasing, here we go. Still haven't been able to determine the direction yet. It's coming through. Right now, the white right wave guide, the right wave guide, the eastern wave guide is now active. The longer horn would have been crossing the street. That means the train could be going up. There's two trains there. That's where the confusion is. There's two trains there. One going east and one going west. That's where that's that's, that's what's what's occurring. <laughs> so we have that this is it. You you really do have to in this sort of our situation in terms with Lionel and our observations. Lionel's a good Lionel is a good starting place. It's a place to start, to start from. He's now doing his daily. Is doing the daily briefing. He's gone from his lives to a daily briefing, and he, he's got enough around him, particularly with his contrarian views. And I, w- I wish Yvette Carnell was still around, but she's not around anymore. Uh, she was uh, sort of uh, his counterpart. It was a sort of a second perspective, but the Yvette Carnell is gone, and so you can't get access to her stuff anymore. And a real shame because it would have good have given a second perspective. Uh, but she didn't last long enough. You can get an understanding of, and again, you have to always sort of be aware that that things can change, that some of your observation may be incorrect, and you have to get more information. In. This is what I talk about conspiracy theories. Never assume that the information that you have is all the information that is there. I couldn't tell what was going on until they had the second horn. We could tell, could tell the second horn was different, going in a different direction. It meant that there was uh, trains on both tracks, one going east and one going west. And there's possibly a third train there because I know there is that, that part that the, where that they're, they're, they're going has three tracks to it, uh, and that at some point trains wait there. So there is a there's sort of a parking station there where a train can stop and wait for for uh, 
other trains with prior, with different priorities, uh, higher priorities to go through, and they wait because they are a low priority uh, train, and they have to wait for their signal. They have to wait for their turn because at certain points, particularly uh, to the east of where we are, going east towards Montreal. Uh, so this is basically the Montreal Windsor corridor, uh, two major ports, two major shipping ports in terms of your uh, supply chain. Uh, to the east, near Oshawa, and just a little, for a little closer, Pickering, as you go past the tracks here, uh, it becomes a single track. And they have to sort of sur 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 uh, work out which trains are going to go through, how long these trains are. So certain trains will have to wait on certain sidings for certain traffic to go through that uh, so there isn't there aren't any collisions and so it is a matter of sort of sorting the traffic make sure that one goes in the with one tra one bit of traffic does not collide with another bit of traffic so they sort the traffic they rate the traffic in terms of priority high prefer high priority goes first and the lower priority sit and wait on the sidings in terms of the tracks. But anyways, this, this is sort of thing that as you as you go through. And I, I did a lot of, of when I was more mobile. I used to take my car and I'd follow the tracks to to one end to the other end. And you get out and observe the trains, and I, be, I was able to sort of figure out the tracking system. And the thing is, you this was. Where you can often make mistakes is, you know, you thought you, you, you because you have to park your car and get out and sort of watch for the trains. But if you're not necessarily careful where you park, uh, there are hidden railroad tracks that go across the road that are not necessarily uh, clearly marked. And I had realized this. And what I did, I, I, I ended up going, I went back very quickly to my car and I moved the car out of the range of the track so there was enough, enough room between the track and my car. And as I did this and I just finished parking the car, what happens? Here comes a train along the track that it was just parked on. If I hadn't gone back, <laughs> there would have been a collision and my car would have been destroyed. Um, so observation is key. Observation is very long. And the same thing here with, with the observation with Lionel. It's going to be a long thing. There's a lot of detail to start sorting out. And I said with the whole thing, because she's talking about Mr. L this, Mrs. L and the product Mrs. L is working on. This is something extremely important that people do not talk about human trafficking enough. But the problem is you need to, this is say with Antifa, and this is some of the solutions to what's going on. What's going to happen? You know, what's going to, watching Virginia, what's going to happen? Well, all of a sudden, you've been paying attention to the media. Well, all the uh, COVID numbers are, are going up in, uh, in Virginia, and they're going to push it into uh, mail-in ballots. So, the, you know, it's still being used. And once they go into mail-in ballots, the, I can guarantee you the Democrat, um, uh, Harry McCullough, is going to win. And that the, the, the Republican crop is not going to win. Is this a, 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 a support of the Republicans? No, not particularly. My view is, and this is my take even on Trump, the Democrats right now have been proven to be so bad, they're so destructive, that it's better to have dead wood in there than nothing at all, than to have these, than to have, to have these people. There is no more police. There are no more rescue people. There are no more emergency services. The as I was explaining before, the military are the predators. They are the aggressors. They're the ones pushing the uh, both the war on drugs. They're pushing the war on terror. They're pushing uh, the regime change. In every place they go, they are literally stirring up a lot of trouble. They're the ones who create the so-called mass migration movements. These these people, these these refugees. Who are they fleeing from? They're fleeing from the United States. They're fleeing from the regime team. The United States has gone into all these areas, Honduras. Look at the, look if you want to hit, get a history of the nineteen eighties. Look at uh, all over north, uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, Iran Iraq missile war, the, the, the 
Iran Iraq war. You look at the uh, that look at that uh, uh, aspect of sort of the uh, all, of a, all of a North affair. I've been sort of chipping on my words again. Uh, look at, into the School of the Americas. Look at the origin of Panama and all, all these, and you begin to understand how the United States as a head sits on either side of these particular issues. And I said that, that what's going on in the papers is is a work. It, it's it's fiction. It's a live action role play. It's LARP, just like Davos. All these things you see in the media, in the media, including uh, the WHO, the UN's WHO, World Health Organ. That's a work. It's not reality. They're, they're creating a fiction. And you can find the scripts, you can find the initial perspectives on this, actually online and on YouTube. Anyways, I think I'm going to leave this here for now, and uh, we'll come back uh, tomorrow night and continue on with the discussion. So, see you then. We are Cyborg Alpha. Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.